Hey, what's up? Look, uh, I'm gonna get right to the point, fool. Um, the regular regular host of this pinche show, um, Mike Catherwood is a puto of large proportions, title and scope, how much of a fucking puto he is. But this podcast is, is pretty dope. So like um I'm gonna come through like a like a like a like a pinch hitter dog and I'm gonna blast some homers of question and answer. My name is Rudy Cisneros. On on the internet, people know me as Kulo Breaker. I earned that name from breaking culos all over the world. Mostly well all over Los Angeles County, but I broke a lot of culos open. Either, you know, with putazos or my, my actual pito, like, like literal, you know what I'm saying? It's sometimes it's a, like a analogy, you know, but sometimes I, I did for real. Anyway, I'm, I'm that bitch ass my Catherwood's cousin, I'm his primo. And like, I'm the better version. Cause as you can see, like we're kind of similar, but I have much more meat in my tonus and I'm much more muscular. Look, I can make my chichis dance. That's how buff I am from burpees and shit, you know, in the pen. I'm, I'm clearly more beautiful. I'm a better lover. Either way, so like um, I'm, I'm coming in for a special edition of Q&A on Mikey Likes You with me, Rudy Cisneros, Culo Breaker. Let's start with... um. La Onda TV. Hey, I know that Vato from La Onda. They're a good band, dog. They make good music. All about, like, you know, Chicano stuff, you know. Does participating in the cinnamon challenge give you, give your mecos the taste of horchata? Interesting question. And an uh, 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 intriguing scientific proposal? It really, what matters is if you swallow any of the cinnamon, but if you're good at the cinnamon challenge, you don't, you know, so none of it goes in your body and just having it up in your mouth, you know, mouthwash and shit, you know, it doesn't make your mecos taste no different, but they do make, but they do make like mecos perfumes, you know, and, and I do believe they come with like a cinnamony brown sugar horchata. It's a good, you know, cause it's creamy, you know, you would like, a nice horchata or a meco escalada or something like that, you know? But thanks for the question, fool. Will the Dodgers win tonight from Centurion gear? Yeah, of course, fool. Like, come on, dog. Flores92501 says, are you bi? No, fool, I'm not bi, you know? I, I'm, I'm, I'm straight, you know, even though, like, I've dabbled in butt. Even though I've dabbled in, you know, man butt here and there, you know, because it's like, you know, like if you were starving, you would eat shit that you don't normally find delicious, you know. So when I was in the in the pin, in the, in the pintafo, it wasn't like a lot of panocha there. There was one um, corrections officer. Her name was Maria. She was all right, but I think like. I thought she was okay because there was nothing but vatos. You know what I'm saying, fool? And, you know, looking back on it, she was a bit thick. Like, beyond good thick. Like, she looked like, um, like, uh, Yoel Romero or some shit. <laughs> and I thought there was vatos in the pen that were better looking than her and, and a little bit more appealing. And, you know, I have no problem with it. But I'm, I'm not, I'm not bi, you know what I'm saying, dog? But if you are, you know, you you go for it like yeah, that, no matter who it is, you know, you gotta be you and you gotta love the people that you feel compelled to love. That's the way I feel. So thumbs up to anyone. I don't care, bi, straight, gay, it doesn't matter, you know? I, I like love, I love love. That's what I'm saying, dog. What do you do when someone is giving you a menacing stare from Altered Head? That's a crazy name, dog. Altered Head. Like, you came out the shoot and you looked and you're like, oh, my head's fucked up. I need to alter it. 
Remember Altered Beast, fool? That video game? That was shit was dope. You would be like a uh, wimpy, like a uh, little chivala puto. And then you get one little power up and then you turn into like normal puto. Then you turn into like me, like athletic, beautiful, muscular Greek god. Then you get one more and you turn into a beast, like some wolf man or some shit like that. Altered Beast. Anyway, Altered Head. What do you do when someone's giving you a menacing stare? Like... Back in the day when I was a younger vato and I was a little bit more temperamental for, you know what, I, I just go right after her, be like, what's up? I'll give my menacing stare back, you know, like a doggy. Sometimes I flick my lips like, like I'm a hungry dog, you know, hungry pit bull. And then, you know, if, if that vato wants to go, then we go. But now I think about it like, if someone's a random vato just going to give me a menacing stare, or even a hyena, now I look at it, it's like, what's up with them? Like, you don't even know me. What, like, are you that insecure? They have to go around showing people how to look, look at me. Like, I'm a, like, you're a, like, you're a perito, like I was saying, like a dog. You have to be all territorial with your shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, you know, there's something in there. There's a reason why most people grow out of that. And it's because... That's baby shit, you know what I'm saying? So I just think about like what's going on with their life, and then I usually I laugh. Sometimes though, it'll be like a real tough looking bet that I don't want to be like, oh shit, what's up? It look like this. I mean, I'm I'm not too I'm not too proud to admit it. Like every you know, once in a while, you know, I, I see that fool that's like this, and I'm like, oh damn, you know? No, I'm not. Don't look at me, though. Don't look at me. I'm not looking. So that's what's up. How do you make your top ramen full? Do you add any other special ingredients? That's from Lone Lonely One Night Stands. That's a, that's you know I don't have no real one night stands no more because I'm married. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty happily married. I would think my wife would say the same shit. So every my one night stands now. They about this shit, you know. That's how I do it, huh? Um, so like my top ramen, you know what I do, dog, is I don't add the the the, the la packet that comes with it for. I just I just heat it up, you know, get it till it's moist and shit. And then what I'll do is I'll put it in a, a, a sifter. Like a pasta strainer or some shit. Like so, the, there's no liquid, right? Then I do like two tablespoons of butter and let it melt full with sea salt, like this. Ba 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 da la la, ba la 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 with sea salt full. That's what's up. You mix that up, you know, and then I get rid of all the fucking. So, so it's not like soupy. It's more like, more like pasta, you know. Yeah, you know that about the soupy. I used to know about the name soupy. A little soupy from Pacoima, dog. He was down. He got his arm blown off though. Wasn't even it wasn't even like a like violence thing. He was a roofer and he went and there was some air vent and he got that shit fucking caught in it. He was doing work and he fell you know it was like a beat up old tenement house and it just fucking fell in some vent and it was like just ripped his arm off that bottle. R.I.P. to his fucking arm, dog. Your brazo, your brazo lives in brazo heaven, dog. All right, let's move on. How many tacos can you eat on cheat day from Route 14? <sighs> I'll tell you this, fool. Carne asada, al pastor, lengua, something like that. I could put away some tacos, dog. But when it's the real taco, the fish taco, dog, you know what I'm talking about? The special fish taco. I'm talking about pussy, dog. <laughs> I'll put away limitless. You know what I'm saying? For limitless tacos. Bring them on, dog. Like you could have a buffet of kind of just squatting clicks you like I'd be like you see that strength endurance in my language uh, that's how many I blast <laughs> all right don't get it twisted 
I worked on that. I had a little piercing. I used to have a piercing back in the 90s, look, and I attached a kettlebell to it. And I was like, That's how I got them to be good. Strength, endurance up in there. Because there's muscles and shit all up underneath, you know, frenulum. Friend uh, and that's, I think, what they call it. Dog. So my hard palate is yoked, dog. It's jacked like fucking, you know. So when you could bring off any panocha from here to Saskatchewan and back, and I just blast them with my lengua. Mama... Mom, me, mom, what, what the fuck that name? All right, look, she says, why is Rudy so damn sexy? It's a combination of things. There's many factors to this. Genetics. My mom looks like Linda Ronstadt and shit in her prime. And my dad looks like young, like a young Ricardo Montalban. So it's, it's no surprise, you know, that you have this beautiful face. And then, of course, I work hard to take care of myself and preserve la money maker and my beautiful body. You know, my Greek god-like body, dog. My male physique is... One more time. Look at my chichis. Look, look, I'm going to put down my, my modelo. Like, bah, 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 bah. I'm going to move to a different, mira, a different... Profile. Now I'm going to my profile. Remember, it's at Kulo Breaker, dog. Um, I loved you on Jason Ellis. Thanks, El Perro. Four, three, three. Um, this vato says, I got all kinds of uh, pinche preguntas for, but then he doesn't give me none. No, no, just that one says, Hey, I remember you mentioning you got your prostate massage. What was the experience like? You know, at first it was, I felt like I was flying to the moon, you know, like Buzz Lightyear or some shit like that. Neil Sadaka, you know, and like, it was scary. I was exciting, pero I was a little scared too. But I knew I was going, I was, I felt like a pioneer, you know, cause I was, I was breaking into new territory, you know, cause I had, my pito had been rubbed and sucked and loved in many different ways. But my, my culo was, was new territory, dog, you know? So the first time I kind went back there, she was like, she was like a culo Lewis and Clark, you know? And to me, that was to add it to it, you know, the excitement of like, what's gonna happen, dog? Cause my meet up, my pinche fight or flight was like this, you know. And at first, because I was so nervous, my butthole was very small and it would not let her in, like, like locked up. But then she whispered to my butthole. She did, she, and she's, you know, I think she said, if I remember this Haina, her name was Little Misty. She was from Duarte. This is 1993. She sang a slow jam to my culo. And it helped loosen things up, you know. She was like, oh, right up to my butt, like this. Always and forever, each moment with you is just like a dream to me that somehow came true. Right there to my culo. Like that. And the air from her singing was very soft and relaxing. And, that, and then I was like, all right, I'm ready. Let's go. You know, and uh, so she did like, but I had to have her take off her nails because that this was the 90s and that kind of was down, you know, so she had nails like fucking Freddy Krueger all matching her fucking lipstick. You know, it was called Mahogany Love was the color. She went to Marinello Beauty School, too, so she was all everything all fleeked out. She had it like that. And I was like, hey, what's up with, that? you know? And so she, I was like, can you pop that shit off? She's like, they're real, fool. And I was like, okay, hold. And I had a belt sander right there because I was working on my, my bed frame. And so I said, and I got it down nice and like this, all pretty. And so then she went, and then she did like a skyhook in my butt like this. And I was, oh, 
I remember I did like like the stanky leg. I was like, oh. And then, but then it was Pleasure Town and beautiful, memorable experience. So, to the little Misty. And that's how I feel about massaging the prostate. When you drop the soap in the pan, do you bend over like a jaina at Chicas Bonitas to pick it up? Or do you see walk like a fool and do a quick drop to pick it up mid-step? Go die, go, go doyers, eh? And that's for real. Hey, you want to know how, when I was in the Pinta, like, I didn't literally drop soap, but when you be in the shower, you know, sometimes, this is what I did. I actually tricked fools so that there was going to be no confusion that that was not to be fucked with, dog. I did, when I knew I was going to get locked up, I had about 30 days between my trial and my, my actual date of incarceration. So I had 30 days and I and I did butt kegels. I squeezed them like this. I had, you know, those like grip strengtheners. I put them in between my butt cheeks and then I would do a fucking bubber, bubber, and I'll, so my butthole and my pelvic floor was yoked, okay? So what I would do is I lo- I would tease them. I'd use my ass like uh, like cheese for a mouse, you know? Like you put it in a mouse trap. I would show my ass. Like, look, look at me at my ass. And so vatos would come over, and next thing you know, when they get there, I would do the devil's butt kegel right to their pito. Snap that shit. Trust me, dog. No one ever fucked with that again. They knew betters, dog. So first time, only time. And I kind of had fun with it, too, because I was like, yeah, it was like jujitsu. I just trapped that guy's pito like this. And he's like, hi. I'm like, that's right. You better tap out, dog. Bang. Pito submission. What? How do I become a down ass perro like you from Ricky Bobby 3? I want my socks to get higher, my mustache to get thicker. Help me become a culo breaker, dog, please. Hey, fool. You just gotta believe in yourself, dog. You know? Cause I you know, I know people be like, hey, listen, I'm not I'm nothing special. No, I'm uh, clearly I'm very special. Most people don't have the in, intel- intelligence and beautiful and and wit. And Pito that I have, you know, I'm like Hard Rock Nick, pero with a beautiful body. I wish I had his eyebrows, though, Fato. But if you believe in yourself, fool, and then you do all the things you need to do to be a better man, it happens, doc. It just happens, pero it's hard, you know. It's If it were easy, every Vato would be buff and rich and happy and gorgeous, you know. So, like... Just know that, like, uh, the struggle's gonna come, but don't run away, dog. Don't run away. Don't turn your back on it. Because when, you know, that shit gets frightening, you want to turn your back, you know. Push through. And you may fail, but, like, once you succeed, just once, dog, then you start believing yourself and you just go, boom, boom. So when it comes to working out or going for that job you want or writing a script or some whatever you dream of, whatever's holding you back, just go for it. And you may fuck up. People may make fun of you, but that's what's holding most people back is that they're scared, dog. They're scared of what everyone around them is going to think or they're going to say. You just got to say, fuck that, dog. Look inside yourself and say, like, I don't I just figure out a way. Fake it, dog. Even if you do give a fuck what people are saying, dog, all around you. My, I'm foaming at the mouth. I'm so excited to give you advice. It isn't. You just got to learn. It's not about what your neighbors or your the vatos you went to high school with or the hyena down the street. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what they say. Maybe they make fun of you. Fuck that. What's going on in their brain, dog? What's up in their soul that they that they feel that way, that they're going to do that to you? Because trust me, down as vatos and hyenas who are in control of their life, boss ass hyenas, they don't pick on anybody for trying and failing. Because they know. They know, fool, that that's part of what makes you a, a champion, dog. That's what makes you a legend. Get Falling off that horse and getting right back up. So if you do go for it and you fail, which most people do. I've done it, dog. You know, I fuck shit up. But like, 
once you do put it all together, dog, or, or even that first time you fuck it up, you look around you and you look at all that the fucking chivala ass mas puto motherfuckers, all rankers, dog, that are going to be making fun of you. Because real G's and, and real hyenas, they don't. Because they know. They look at their like, hey, you know, in fact, most of the time they'll encourage you. They'll be like, hey, that was impressive, man. I know it didn't come out like how you wanted it, but I see you. I see. I see you going for it, dog. You know, I might I might cry, fool. So meaningful. This is not a this is not a tear tattoo, fool. That's real fucking tears, dog. All right. Next question, dog. Nate Skillet. Hey, fucker. <laughs> Just wondering how long it took to grow that down ass mustache. The womb broom. Hashtag womb broom, dog. Hey, Nate Skillet, I'll tell you what's up. I'm 43 years old. It took 43 years. Not, well, no, in fact, it took zero years because I came out. You call it womb broom, but you're thinking like I, I use it to broom up the panocha like this. But I literally was in the womb with this shit. I came out. I saw pictures, dog. My uncle Lester had a had a Polaroid for my birth, which is odd because that's his sister. My mom's his sister. He's right there taking pictures of her blasted open panocha. My head comes out and there's my my. My brush is like this, beautiful. When I came out, I, I don't know if it's a dream or nothing, but I think I remember like like playing my my umbilical cord in the womb, like a harmonica, like so it was like a stand up bass, but a harmonica too, because I would t- I'd brush it with my brush. I was a baby, the fetus dog, and I was playing like more bounce to the ounce and shit, you know. So that's how, you know, some people are put on this earth to have dope shit. I, I, I think that's how God looked at me and this bro shuffle. So. But don't give up. Hey, another question about my mustache. Denim me, me this, <laughs> 41. Rudy, how do you get such a sweet shine on that mustache, dog? I'll tell you, dog. A mixture of suavecito pomade and turtle wax. I learned that because that's what I used to beat off with too, dog. That's what I, and I cause I wanted my beat though to have a nice luster, you know, shiny dog, like candy flake dick. That's what I was looking for for. So I would mix up a little turtle wax, a little, you know, carnauba wax if you can't afford the good turtle waxing. Little suavecito like this. And I was like, what? And next thing you know, I had a shiny ass dick for. Highness will comment, you know, I break, break it out the first time. They're like, oh, damn, that's like Excalibur, all shiny. I was like, you better believe, Haina. And the one time I was doing work on my pito, you know, looking at an old picture of, you know, some shit, you know, Leanne tweeting probably in that era on the Fredericks of Hollywood. I used to get that. I think my mom would get that shit. You know, the, the catalog, Fredericks of Hollywood, and I would steal that for sure. Like, and I'd be like in the bathroom just for hours. I'd be like, hey, I'm just listening to the Raider game, Dodger game, whatever. But I was really beating my pito. And that once I was sweaty and I just went like this. I wiped my mustache like this in my hand. And it just fucking was golden, dog. I went to Florentine Gardens later that night and everyone's coming. They're like, damn, it's like a disco ball on your face. I was like, serio. In your professional opinion, what is the best way to smash a torta respectfully? I'm going to come with you correct right now, dog. I'm not going to make no jokes. The best way for sex, la sex is to always be thinking about your partner throughout every part of it. Because, look, you're going to get your pleasure. Or else, I mean, that comes with the territory, right? That's the part of smashing that, that why everybody likes it, dog. So just, just know that that shit there and then be constantly thinking in your head, like not, oh, what would I do right now that makes me feel, no, what would I do right now? Make this high now or this about to feel amazing. Make them feel safe and ready for action, dog. And that may be wild shit. But you have to wait till you get to that moment. You got to feel it out. You know what I'm saying, fool? It's like uh, when I was in the Pinta and I would play uh, pickup basketball, dog. I wouldn't just go in there 
like you know in the in the in the paint fucking elbowing looking for rebounds i had to know maybe these vatos just want to relax you know but sometimes you know they're they're going hard dunking and shit you know and fouls everywhere so i was like oh okay we're calling our own fouls that seems to be okay all right let's go dog but I had to feel it out to know that that was the, the mood that they were in. And the same thing goes with knocking them boots, dog. You got to be like, mira, checking out the ocean, the the Panocha ocean, the Panocean. That's what you do. And you just look out like a sailor. And you know your boat is your dick. And you're like, okay, these waves are very calm. So I'm just going to glide right in. See how this goes. And then the ocean responds and goes, oh, I like that. Let me give you a bigger wave. And next, you know, bah, 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 bah. you're just fucking hitting it like a soldier, though. Vince Calta Grione is less attractive person, more likely to be crazy in bed and do more shit for you compared to a fine ass 10. This may sound bad, but this is the truth. Only with girls. Okay. Because I'm beautiful, I'm a perfect 10, and I know, and I'm a man, and I, I, I'm i open to anything. Wow, fool. I'll do anything to please them, minus. But I've been with the ladies. That's why I married my Haina, because she's a beautiful, perfect 10, but she's also nasty. She's a nasty Haina. She's a party, fool. Bedroom fiesta, fool. And that's rare, because most girls that are that fine, they're all fucking loco, dog. So they don't, they don't do crazy stuff that like sometimes it's even better. You go out to a club, you see, you know, I remember I was at Sam's Hopra, the strip club in LA downtown. There was, I can't believe the, the, the crew of Hainas there were insane for motley ass crew, dog. <coughs> Toothless, missing tooth, gold tooth. C-section scars, like 11 C-section scars, or maybe stab wounds. I don't know, because they were up on her neck. So I don't know if you can pull a baby out of that. Serio. They were fucked up. But they were wild, dog. When we took them back to my friend's pad, dog. It was my homie, Pap Smear. When we took them back to my friend's pad, this vato from El Monte, his name was Lil, Mr. Grouper. That was his name. And he had a pad in El Monte. Yeah, it was a wild night. All right, so that's it. I think there's all the good questions I got for. Let me first, th I can't believe I'm saying this, but thank you to Mike Catherwood for at least allowing me to do this. I didn't have to elbow my way in. Like he was like, hey, you want to do like a, I know you need to help promote your shit. So if you want to do an episode for, go ahead. So thank you to Mike. I can't believe I'm saying that because he's a bitch. Serio. Uh, thank you to all the sponsors, you know, thank you to um, God for making me this beautiful. And thank you to everyone who's listening or watching this. And thank you to everyone who gave me questions, you know, and remember, like, serio, like, listen for like, this is my parting message. It's like, it's like my, my grandma used to always tell me, dog. She will say. When life gives you lemons, get your dick up.